Good morning and good evening to wherever you are in the world. This is your host of 3x3 Hustle Hype 2019 FIBA 3x3 Asia Cup champion and World Cup participant Greg Heyer. And this week we have, oh, thank you. A round of applause for people that aren't watching. But uh, we have 3x3 Hustle Hype, upcoming maybe rising star and Australian, you know, I don't know, junior superstar. But maybe one of the, the brightest personalities on the tour, and that is Marina Whittle. How are we doing? Oh, I'm great today. Had some great weather over the weekend, so I'm just oof, flushed going back into lockdown this week. Yeah, for those that <laughs> don't know where your location is, you're in the beautiful part of the world called Melbourne. Yep. How Melbourne, Victoria. Going? Yes, how's it all going there? Obviously, oh. I think everyone's on the cusp of, of out, <laughs> and, and you guys are just dragged back in. Yeah, just, they can't, honestly, they can't let us out. We're too keen to stay back in. Uh, no, nah, it's good. Um, it's been filled with, like, home workouts, um, getting onto a basketball court whenever and if ever I can. So, yeah, it's just, honestly, it's really pushed a lot of um, people to stay super motivated at home. But, um, yeah, keeping up as much as I can, as best as I can. You never know what's going to turn up, like, next week. So, may as well prep this week. Take it as much as it comes. You've <laughs> Every 3x3 Pro Hustle event play in the World Cup qualifier in Puerto Rico last year where we joined forces, I guess, and supporting each other. But yeah. you just recently signed with Adelaide Lightning <clears throat> last season. How has, I guess, your off-season, pre-season been? Um, well, oh, with everything that's going on, like we've honestly been super lucky to get on two courts. Like NBL1 has been cancelled um, and postponed in Victoria. So... We're actually lucky to get like a, a Melbourne-based 3x3 um, sessions happening. So that was really good. That was going really strong for a couple months. So, you know, getting on court three times a week, strictly for 3x3, I don't think has ever happened before in Australia. So that was just intense, um, awesome. And got like a lot out of it. As you know, 3x3 just gives you so much confidence. And it's like, it's just such a dynamic sport that it just like, it feeds into everything else. So I've had a really good off season. Um, minus like all the gaps between being able to be on court and stuff so i'm actually very proud of all the work we've been able to put in down here in victoria and yeah i'm really proud of how far i've gotten this off season considering everything's going on how was the those few months training with the i guess the australian contingent i saw there was obviously your staples and in beck maddie and elise mm. in terms of um playing around but how is it getting I guess some some fresh faces and um, I guess now you would you would have been a, a vet I guess in the sport <laughs> in that regard how was it to, to get a, a different dynamic you know it's awesome like the amount of girls that still come in haven't tried it before and even getting them in for one or two sessions like we had Nadine Payne jump in for a session we had Georgia Pino who's just back from college we had Lauren Scherf who's going up to Sydney and just yeah fresh faces coming in who've never tried the sport before and get them who are absolutely falling in love with it. Their bodies are like perfectly fitted for 3x3. Just getting them around it and getting like the spread of 3x3 even more around Australia is just so important. But also like, it's just great to see. Cause I know when I first tried, I was like, oh my God, this is like the best thing ever. I love this sport. Um, and I know the same thing can be said for Beck, Alice and Maddie and even Annalie Maley. And now seeing it like even three years on, people are like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. It's like, yeah, sweet. Let's get it out there. Take us back to that very first event. I mean, how did you even become involved? How have you been invited? I mean, you've played every single sort of tour event. Hmm. Um, I remember when I first sort of saw that, then even last year, that's my sort of first experience. You became a bit of a dominating force in that sort of circuit. I mean, how was, yeah, that very first event, how did you get involved? Oh, um, I was playing at Another World Inspectors, which is um, Dave Buer's um, NBL1 Siebel Club. So he was there and he was the men's coach and I was playing on the women's side. So I think um, because he was a little bit familiar with Beck Cole, he just got like the strongest three of that crew. So my first season or my first round was with Beck Cole, Alice Koenig, Alice Cooney? No, Hannah Zavik myself and I think Izzy Chilcott and that year was just so good because like we loved playing with each other and loved playing for each other and it was just so much fun like that was when we were at the um the Docklands Docklands yeah. there was just like a huge warehouse just like decked out there was like like TVs from like floor to ceiling 
and it was just, yeah, it was just so sick. I was like, this is awesome. How did how did you go? Like, I mean, you obviously would have done a couple of training sessions, but was that very first like? I mean, you just spoke about it. You enjoyed it immensely. Mm. To get go. Did you sort of feel that your game was suited to that style? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, that was this one moment uh, I remember quite fondly. We had. Alice Koenig jumped in for the day. Um, I think because Izzy or Hannah couldn't come. And there was just like a loose ball and I just jumped on and bumped Alice by accident and went up and I walked away and I was like, I'm sorry, Alice. She's like, no, babes, go for it. Like, if you've got it, do it. I'm like, yeah, this is just great. It's so supportive. I absolutely love it. And it was, it was a little bit of a learning curve that first session um, or that first day because um, like I had never practiced it before. I think I had like maybe a couple of sessions, but actually like getting into the competitiveness of it, actually having refs present, like some of them call fouls, some of them don't. There's a little bit more play. Sometimes there isn't. Um, but yeah, the pace, great. Love it. Can shoot. Boom. Score first. And then track <laughs> your teammates. Like it's so great. Love it. Absolutely. Did you feature in that? 2000 or in the Australian camp, like in Melbourne, um, M, oh no, it wasn't MSAC, but like what was that early. day center? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you involved there? Yeah, so that was awesome to have so many people around yeah. Australia come in. It was good because you were there, weren't you? Yeah, so I want to, I mean, like, let's talk about that because obviously you transitioned to tour and then you saw that sort of, um, please don't be offended. Usually when people say that, people do get offended, but I mean, you obviously <laughs> then now featuring a national campaign and, and I thought you played like a vital role in Puerto Rico, mm. um, maybe a bit, a bit of an underrated role, but a really important role. How was it that getting into that national team dynamic, was that a bit of an eye opener? Like, geez, I could actually, you know, use this as, I mean, obviously you've got aspirations to play at the highest level mm. you can, but were you sort of thinking, yeah, this is something that I should really, you know. Uh, yeah, think. absolutely. I think as well, it kind of hit me during that um, Australia camp that, that um, those couple of years that I did have before everyone started playing and started getting around it, like it was pretty crucial for me. Um, just because it's just such like a mental focus, like it's the mental switch, you know, um, like five and five, you have five, of, you have 10 people on the court at one time, but there's only six on 3x3. So just that mental switch, that attacking mode. Um, and yeah, when we went to Puerto Rico, uh, Look, it did take me, my nerves got probably the better of me the first day, um, just because it was my first time representing Australia, like, at any 3 x event. So, um, I was more inclined to, you know, give the ball to Beck and Alice and shoot my shot when it was there, but, um, and obviously locked down on defence. But that second day was really, I just came alive and um, knocked down all my shots, we had a great day, had, like, a great overall tournament. And I was just, yeah, walking away from that, I was like, wow, I could really do this. I could really, like, compete to get to the Olympics if we get there, which is awesome. So, yeah, it was a really awesome tournament for me. And since then, I've just tried to take, like, that next step each time. What a, where, where have you seen that sort of, you, you spoke about, you played for a couple of years. Where have you seen the game grow um, in those last couple of years? Well, <clears throat> so our first tournament was my team with Beck and Izzy and Hannah was very fortunate because we had Dave who knew so much and now he's turned out to be the 3x3 coach for Australia. So we had him and he's like, you know, this is how to win, this is how to do it, this is how you set screens, this is how you're supposed to go. Adversing people who had just, you know, heard about it, signed up, tried to compete for the playing money. Mm. And then you had, like the next year was like, okay, we had like WNBL players coming in and we had more people coming in and they actually had practice beforehand. And then this year is like, everyone knows about it. Like everyone knows like the intensity of their people who are in WA, people in Northern Territory, people in Queensland who are actually like putting time and effort into coming down to these NBL um, 3x3 events and just trying to like actually like go for it and putting all this effort into it and actually understanding the game. I think as a country, like, we've actually taken huge steps to understand the game and actually know how to win rather than just going out and being like, oh, it's just three on three, like, it's fine. No, it's like 3x3. You, you're like, let's do this, you know? Um, Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great times. <laughs> An unbelievable trip for many reasons. Um, Memorable. How did you find out? I mean, you were selected, were you sort of... Um, was there sort of yeah? This is a a fair chance that you're going to be 
you know, being selected. I mean, that would have been in the midst of, I think we were, had even just played a, um, in Geelong on the waterfront. Um, when did you find out? Um, we, when did we leave? We left on like a Friday, yeah, or a Wednesday. And I think I found out on like two days before. You're joking. So, yeah, I swear. So, <clears throat> Obviously, um, in the rotation was normally like Maddie, Maddie yeah. Alice, um, Ben and um, Keely. Yeah. And Maddie was over in Europe at the time. And depending on whether she made finals or not, and her team made finals, um, she was going to be available or not. She didn't end up being available. They went through to finals, which was awesome. Um, and then I got the phone call two days before being like, hey, you need to go to practice tomorrow morning because, you know, we want you to go to Puerto Rico on, on like in two days. And I was like, oh, all right, so this is happening. And he's like, but wait, but we'll know for sure sometime tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, let's get this going. I'm just going to rock up to practice, crush it. Yeah. So you have to take me. So, yeah, it was, it was exciting. One, I love that you made the phone call like this. Like yeah, who does that? Yeah. <laughs> Bring, bring, hello. <laughs> um, how was the emotion of, of like actually knowing? Because I mean, um, and it was such a bizarre element. I mean, I, I remember getting selected. I flew over from Perth and then I, I didn't even have a training session, I don't think. I think, yeah, because I flew from Perth to Sydney and then met some of, I think, most of the people, the crew would have been like we all flew yeah. together and, and met. I think I mean, our first conversation was because I just signed for Perth. Um, yes. And I was going over to Perth, and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm from Perth. And I was like, oh, yeah, never been before. And you're you might like, have been at Los Angeles Airport in the lounge. Yeah, you're like, oh, are you excited? And I think you talked about sharks, and you're like, yeah, no, nah, you know, I've got a life over there. Yeah, I started my own charity. It's, you know, it's no big deal. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh I'm quite old. Right. <laughs> my parting days are done. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is great. Don't know the guy ruined my first interaction with him. Hey, mate, love sharks. <laughs> should I surf in Perth? No, I shouldn't. Um, so obviously you found out like a day before. I mean, were you like did you call your parents or what was going on? You're like, oh, yeah. I was so hyped. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, look, <clears throat> I wasn't so hyped because there was still like some contingencies, like because it was like relatively last minute i didn't want to get my hopes up just in case um like maddie for whatever reason was able to make the tournament um so for that reason i just didn't want to necessarily get my hopes up but i was still like low-key like hey so just got a phone call going to puerto rico I'm going to uh puerto rico <laughs> hey mom uh. bring bring <laughs> yeah um no, it was awesome. I was super excited, like really chuffed when I got the phone call and I was just like, yes, this is like, I could do this. Was that your first time representing Australia or more? It yeah, it was my first time. So I didn't go through the junior system. So it was like a really big deal for me. And um, yeah. Talk yeah. to me about that emotion. I mean, I'm, I'm similar. Um, I mean, you obviously mm. are a lot, a lot younger than me. Um, but, I mean, so you, you got to by the buns. At a younger, <laughs> a younger <laughs> age, but... When was it that sort of you, I mean, I remember, you know, getting that jersey, I think I might have got it and like putting it on the bed like that sort of, and I was like, I'm definitely Instagramming this, but, um, yeah. you know, how was that emotion of, you know, yeah, getting out there, wearing the green and gold, you know, the, the Australian jersey for the mm. first time? Oh, so great. Like, it was just unbelievable. Like, and especially because we were at a qualifying tournament as well, made it just like that much more meaningful to me. Um, I got my jersey, I think I got my jersey at the airport and obviously being in, in like great company with the girls um, who'd all done this before and just being the one outlier being like, yeah, all right, this is <laughs> you, oh, yeah, here we go girls, let's go. Um, and like having to like chill a little bit because I'm like, this is so great. No, it's all right, cool, I've got to be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Yeah. Be cool. yeah. Um, but yeah, like emotions are really high and like I, I had a couple moments where I was like, yeah, this is even though this is just a qualifying tournament or even though this is like just one trip, this is still like, there's so deal. much work goes behind just getting this Jersey, you know, like in any respect, like whether it's a, like a one-off like Asia cup or something like there's so much that goes behind that, that like people don't see. So this was like a couple of years in the making. So it was awesome. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Now, talk to me. Memorable, memorable moments. Was there was there a particular game? You were getting buckets on that last day. I mean, obviously, um, yeah. I think when you guys walked in in the end to qualify for the World Cup. But yeah, um, what did you take from that um, that trip? Uh, enjoying yourself immensely in celebrations. So much fun. Um, <laughs> So there's a couple of things that step out to me. And like, nearly is getting stuck in Puerto Rico. Nearly get nearly getting stuck in Puerto Rico with Alice Cunha getting. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of memorable moments of that trip. But um, there was a couple of moments in the games. Um, like there was one when Beck passed me and it was like really awesome because this snapshot, you know how there's cameras like on the side. So Beck drove middle and she kicked it out to me and I was spotting up as a shooter. I catch the ball and like I just go up for a shot and it's like, it's like cash. But the camera was following the ball and then like went past me and then just came back. And it, all you see is like, I think I had my name on it. It was like five as well, like Whittle five. And like, I think it was in gold. And I just went up and I was like, man, that's just like picturesque. Cause like all the end, of, uh, the end of it was like ball through the net. I'm just sitting there perfect. I was like, wow, love that. So that's probably one of the biggest standouts. Absolutely. Like one of them was like, we were up like 20 to five or something. And I just had it on the wing. <clears throat> Everyone, for whatever reason, like everyone was like in the key. I think I was just like, gotten to throw out and I was like yeah all right I'm gonna get two boom 22 to like eight or something and I was like yeah this is awesome what was your role in I mean I've obviously I mean you guys are all ballers but mm -hmm. I mean what was and, and did it change I mean I know you would have obviously been overthinking it initially but by the end of it as I mean you were dead eye whatever yeah. they say. um you know shooting and, and that defensive role as well but you know penetrating really good and i think that sort of showed maybe i saw that in moomba this year sort mm. of really taking an, an an aggressive role maybe as you know you came in and do want to step on any toes but initially where have you seen that i guess that transition of being in puerto rico what was your role there to what i guess would have been the, the tour this year yeah, so I think in Puerto Rico, definitely my role was more so like shooter defense, uh, shooter defender, um, or kick and drive. Obviously, in the time, like stepping into a team that had been together for so long, like, it, yeah, I did maybe overthink it a little bit where I was like, you know what, everyone has a role, but everyone needs to score. And if my shot is the three or the two ball, I'm sorry, then that's my shot for the day. And if for whatever reason people don't figure that out, I'm going to shoot it every time I catch the ball. So <clears throat> that was more so my role I found at that point. And I was really comfortable with that. Like I was a knockdown shooter that, that weekend. And um, probably where it's progressed is less of a role player and less of an understanding of having roles on the team. So at Moomba Festival this year, I had like a great squad. I think we only had three on the second day, three or four on the second day or three on the first day. And just understanding that like, yo, yeah, we all have like, things that we're really good at but also like everyone try and score so definitely I'm super comfortable in the two but also figuring out how to get inside like making a couple post moves like a couple pivot steps like you know anything's possible so yeah I really felt my game progress since Puerto Rico especially. Progress five on five into that as well? Yeah absolutely I think it's more so like that attacking mindset and just that like scorers mentality um, and I think for 3x3, like, you need to just kind of suck it up and go with it. You know, like, if you're not getting the call, you can't talk about it. If you're not, if it's not dropping, you've got to figure it out on the run. So for WNBL and for 5-on-5, five five, it definitely just, um, yeah, flipped the switch and was just like, ah, oh, it's not working, just figure out another way on mm -hmm. the fly. It's made me definitely, my mentals and my basketball IQ, it's definitely increased because of playing 3x3 and having to figure out, like, defensive matchups and stuff. Um, and like and my fitness as well. Poor, <laughs> unreal. <laughs> Give Rebecca, Rebecca J. Cole a run for her money. <laughs> These abs. Um. Yeah. yeah uh, like I don't think anyone's look. No. I mean, I mean hashtag Rebecca J. Cole's cheese greater abs. Um, hashtag stunner. <laughs> but I want to talk about the dynamic with your partner, which I I enjoy on the social media world. Yeah. But how how is it going? How is it playing against her? Especially oh, three yeah. x three. Do you play on the same team or usually against each other? 
Uh, last year we played against each other for all tournaments, and this year we ended up playing on the same team. It was awesome. Like, we actually did really well. Wasn't too bad. Like, I mean, I felt like if it... Because 3x3, there's no love lost. Like, it's a physical thing, and even, like... Oh, no. I remember even that national camp, like, the very first time, and I was, you know, it was good mates with plenty of players, but, like, mm. you'd basically shoulder charge someone, and, like... No call. And you had to, like, couldn't take it personal. I'm like... You dead yeah. set nearly tried to kill me. Um, yeah. But, yeah. And this is why it's funny, right? Because you know how we talked about how um, at the first, like, the progression of it throughout Australia is like, you know, mm. no one really knew how to play it. Some people were figuring it out. And when people are figuring it out, they just kind of go, some people go into that mindset where it's like, yeah, it used to be super crazy physical. Like, I just <laughs> tell everyone. Yeah. And I love my partner so much. Yeah. But it got to a point where I was like, you can't can't do that <laughs> yeah. but it's can't. working so okay <laughs> yeah that's I, I just i yeah i'm, I'm intrigued because five on five and you don't really there's times like if you're playing against mm-hmm. each other adelaide and sydney you know like with her now like yeah like, why not even play against each other yeah no it's like we're actually really good at that because you know we're both super competitive um and she can get any rebound out of us like i've never seen anyone it's like her, the tips of her fingers have another hand on it so like this is unreal it's a real life spider spider uh, yeah like just unreal and like that's so frustrating for me because like she's taller than me so like there is that competitive edge but like you said once we're done with three so once we step off the court it's mm. over so yeah i mean i don't think we had to like struggle at any point like we've talked about it a couple times but i'm like yo that was a clear foul. And she's like, no, it wasn't. It's very sorry. And I'm like, are we cooking risotto right. later? <laughs> are we? I'm not cooking later. <laughs> um, what, what's, what, what ambitions are you harboring? I mean, obviously, I know you want to play. You spoke about the Olympics. Is it, mm-hmm. are you looking at, obviously, you're, you're still relatively young in that sort of landscape. You know, where, where have you seen it? I mean, are you, you know, really trying to force yourself into that equation? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I'm actually very, oh, I can't say very happy, but like the time that COVID has allowed us to work on that individual game, I've really benefited from, especially on the 3x3 front. So, yeah, I, stu- I do still have goals in mind. Like, I really want to get to the Olympics. But, you know, before the Olympics, I really want to get to that qualifying team. I really want to get to the Olympic qualifiers. Um, you know, I'm, I've got my own back. Like, I know what I can bring to a team. And, like, I'm just still pushing. Um, and that's great. I think for the Australian landscape, like, if anything, this last year has proved, like, how many people are capable of making the team. So the competitiveness is definitely up there. And that works great for me. Like, I'm even more um, driven because of it. <clears throat> so, yeah, definitely I'm still looking for that Australian representative. I want to be in that four, five, I think they're going to six maybe. Mm-hmm. So, especially for those big tours. Um, so, yeah, just maybe being a bit more consistently in the teams rather than like a one-off for Puerto Rico. And that was my trip for the year, you know? Yeah, absolutely. We, we touched on that then, obviously – yeah, the how it's going. What what do you reckon? What's your words of advice? You know, even from a, a grassroots level, how do we continue growing the games so you know it becomes um yeah, like, I mean, yeah, everyone wants to play three x three. Yeah, um, <clears throat> look, I would just say everyone should get out and have a go. Like if they don't know about it, or if they've never played it and they have like some sort of perception on it. It's like the reason why everyone is so obsessed with it and so in love with it is because they played it once and they absolutely fell in love. So I would des- like desperately and definitely say everyone get out there and have a go. But also to the girls who are like coming up and have had a go and have figured out that it's really for them and then, you know, go back to their five and five stuff, I would just say take as much away from the game as you possibly can. You know, this game is, for, is meant for everyone and anyone. You know, so don't think just because you had, like, a oh, bad couple sessions, bad tour, like, whatever, like, you are still more than capable to achieve. Like, you're in a game that has really no ceiling at the moment. So no individual should have a ceiling while they're playing this sport. You see that? I mean, obviously, I don't think... And you spoke about Lauren Scherf and, and other yeah. 
more players playing in the offseason. Do you see it naturally attracting more and more WMVL players, maybe borderline Opal players? Do you see it as yeah. even that, that segue between the two? Absolutely. We had, and Lauren's actually a really good example because she was at one of those very first tournaments, just heard about it with some of her friends, had a go, didn't understand it. And, you know, Please. ran on her. <laughs> but, um, and then she came this year during like our workouts and, you know, with just that little bit of coaching, with that little bit of mental shift, like she was dominating us. Like she was shooting three, she was posting up. She's like six foot seven, so no one can really stop her. So it's definitely attracting more WNBL and like star, or not, not star opals, but star opals. I mean, we've got Beck Cole for Christ's sakes. But um, I can definitely see the attraction growing and who knows what's going to happen in a year or so, like with more pro tours going, pro hustles going on. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's very exciting to witness, like especially from my point of view, from seeing like where we were three years ago to where we are now. It's just, it's huge. Absolutely. Mate, I want to finish on last off and obviously we've had a bit of a, bit of a laugh, but the, a laugh. The, um, the Australian culture, especially in the, in the woman's side, it's, uh, it's a very mm. joke bunch I think adds to maybe the reason why they're so successful how was it you know getting brought into into the lineup <clears throat> um, we said oh. we we played a a role on the court but you obviously mm. brought a role off the court and to the humorous side but how how was that I mean just <laughs> part of the um the culture of that sort of side and that whole dynamic especially there's only four of us I mean yeah. how's that been well, I've said it before, like, I just think that we all work so well because we just generally like each other and enjoy each other's company. Um, and, like, sometimes you can't get that, but it's also super lighthearted when we hang around. So, you know, we'll rock up, we'll make some, like, inappropriate jokes to each other, we'll have a, some banter, have some giggles, love giggles. And um, just, like, kind of removing that, like, that weight almost. And it's like, you know, who cares? Like, come on. We're here now, like, let's have some fun. Um, and that chemistry that we have off court is just next to none. Like, even the entire Australian group is just for the girls, about the girls. Yeah, the girls. <laughs> yeah, the girls. <laughs> Go, babe. Yeah. So, yeah, super supportive and super, just, like, the best. Like, every time, every time I do, like, a 3x3 session, my partner and I leave and we're just like, man, that's just, just love those girls. So it's like, it's truly like mateship to the very core. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> it just makes me excited. Even when you're talking about, oh, God, I love 3X3 in that world. Such yeah, a, right? It's like, oh. Weird. And were you at the Moomba Festival? No, the um, Grand Prix? I wasn't there. Oh, my God. Like, because talking about that, and this is obviously, yeah, a very serious thing, but like I literally yeah. was like on the Friday... Yeah, like, I was like, sweet, because we just won Moomba. So I was like, mm. yeah, rolling. And that was like, I mean, and I'm, I'm sure you're exactly the same. I was like, this is going to be the year. Like, I was like, I'm actually going to focus on 3x3, like, big time. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, our aspirations were, were done for it. But I was like, yeah, world tours, if I can do as many. Yeah. Maldives, Dubai, like. <laughs> just trying to get to everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. Anywhere that has the beach, I can relax as well. And, um. Yeah, and then but I was like on Thursday night, like literally because I had a flight in the morning, um, mm. and I was like going to get there for the tournament, and then um, was like, no, yeah, I can't remember when I was, but I was like yeah. um, literally scroll refreshing my my feed every single second. Yeah, to, like six in the morning, it's like um, Grand Prix is cancelled, and I'm like, you're joking. Yeah, um, I remember at the Moomba Festival um, was when. There was like because the moon was only like the weekend before, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was when like they started implementing um like yeah, hand sanities and like totally keeping. Well, up wasn't that bad though? Probably. No, it was even. I reckon it was two weeks because even that I was thinking that was a festival and I brought my my little fella. Obviously, I, oh. I had a sick headband. Yeah, uh, sick headband. <laughs> yeah, yeah I but like, um, should I do that? No, my hair's not that short yet. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, like yeah, no, and then what? How that changed mm -hmm. so you play grand prix then like you guys play like six games yeah so we ended up doing it so moomba like i said um i think i was probably just more on the paranoid side because i had this joke with the perth girls like last wmbl season when it started breaking out and we were in a um 
sorry, a little backstory. Um, yeah. We were in like the Perth lounge, like the airport lounge. And I'm just sitting there and we're all having like these great chats, got my coffee. And then I see like on the very far TV in the very back is like um, Chinese town has been like evacuated quarantining a town and i'm like oh. Oh, that's a huge headline we should be paying attention to this yeah and there's like the and i'm like this is just like those movies and i'm like guys we should really be paying attention to this and then i was like no 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 i ignore it yeah sure enough here we are but so i've just been like hyper aware of it i guess since that day i was like oh and i'm a huge movie buff so i've seen all the movies and i'm like <laughs> of course this is, huge. This is unreal and um, so when the Grand Prix hit, I was like leading up to, so I was like, you know, I don't know about this. Like, you know, cases in Victoria getting more serious. There's all this stuff happening. And the yeah. day of, we woke up, I think at like five or six because like you needed to get in there. It's a Grand Prix. Hmm. And I'm so sorry for this long story. But, like, no, but, don't. but we needed to get in there. And, but we also weren't sure what the deal was because we'd been told like, oh, we don't really know. Like, we're, I guess we're going to find out on the day. And the setup was awesome. So we ended up getting in there and they're like, just come in, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Got in there, there was absolutely no one at the Grand, at the Grand Prix. So there was all the stalls open. Weird. Oh my God, just eerie. Like there was no cars, there was like music playing, but like it didn't, it wasn't loud. Yeah. So it was just like an eerie situation. And we played like one round of games and then they're like, hey, so we're shutting this down. Let's go to MSAC and play the entire tournament today so that we can just like call it. Yeah. And it was like super hard, but um, absolutely wild. Unfortunately, that's our last one, but absolutely uh, wild. Backstory. So I didn't right. take it serious at all. So <laughs> we literally, our team was flying to Japan and like this is as the, I remember the cruise ship. Yeah, yeah. So, oh. The, yeah, like we're going to fly in. I've booked flights, everything. And I said to my wife, I'm like, oh, going. And then my mother-in-law is like, you know, something's going on. Like hmm. there's a cruise ship. With front, and I'm like, nah, <laughs> ignore the We're going on a plane, not a yeah. cruise ship. It's all right. Nah, I, I'm good and I'll beat it. Yeah. And then like day by day. And then to the point that my wife, who's pretty like sort of relaxed, goes, you're not going. And I was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not going. Um, and that was like... What a serious thing, but it's so bizarre. So bizarre. But anyway, we could talk all day. Yeah, sorry, guys. Um, My bad. No, all good. Super Mate, well. really, really appreciate your time and more so really enjoying to see how successful you are. Um, well, I think you're going to have an unbelievable uh, WNBL season. We saw that towards the back end of last season, but I think you're flourishing mm. the 3x3 game. It's been a compliment. So thank you, mate. Uh, yeah, really thanks, mate. It's been great. Um, hopefully we get uh, to catch up sooner than later share some more Puerto Rico antics <laughs> but for everyone else thank you for tuning in for another episode of 3x3 Hustle Hype please check out our Instagram, Twitter and Facebook for all your 3x3 information otherwise everyone stay, take care and stay safe and thank you again Marina thanks mate, stay safe everyone